This is now our third video looking at discrete random variables. In this video we're going to look at what we call the expected value or mean and variance of the probability distribution. Let's start off with the mean. We say that this is the expected value of x or e of x and again we use the capital here which is going to be equal to the sum of x multiplied by the probability that x is equal to x. Initially this can look quite daunting. All we're doing is taking each value of x, multiplying it by its probability, and then adding it up. So let's look at a basic example. So we'll draw up a table and we will take some values of x. So let's say we've got now x is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So nice straightforward values, we'll put these in, and then we'll now look at the associated probabilities. And we could write this now as p of x. I've said p of x, alternative notation is the probability that x is equal to x. So let's put in now 0 0.1, let's say we got 0 0.3, let's say we got to 0 0.4, and we got 0 0.2. So all of those sum to give me 1. So if I wanted now the expected value of x or the mean, I would have 1 multiplied by 0 0.1. That's just taking now the value of x and multiplying it by its probability. Plus 2 multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 3 multiplied by 0 0.4 plus now 4 multiplied by 0 0.2. So let's go ahead and do this. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.6 plus 1.2 plus 0 0.8. So if we add all of that up, that's going to give us 2.7. So we can say the expected value of expectance of x is 2.7. Now, this doesn't have to be one of our values of x. It's simply now the mean. So let's look at a slightly more challenging example. What we might have is a probability distribution. So let's say we've got now a probability distribution. We would take values of x. So let's put x just here. Let's say we've got minus 1. Let's say we've got 0. We've got 1 and 2. And we've got now the probability that x is equal to x. So again, I've just changed the notation to give a bit of variety. So 0 0.2. Let's say we've got 0 0.3. Let's say we've got A and let's say we've got B. Now we might be told now, it might say given the expected value of X, so E of X is going to be 0 0.6, we might be asked to find, let's write this down, find A and B. I'm just going to make some questions up as we go. We might be asked to find now the probability, so probability that X is equal to 1. We might have another question, find the probability that x will be between 0 and 2. So 0 not included, 2 included. So let's go ahead and try and solve A and B. A couple of different ways that you could do this. We know that the sum of the probability of x being equal to x must be 1. We've seen this in a previous video. So all of these numbers must add to give 1. All probabilities give 1 when we add them up. So we've got 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus A plus B is equal to 1. That's 0 0.5, so we can say A plus B is equal to 0 0.5. And we can call this equation 1. Let's now go ahead and look at our expected value. We can say the expected value of X is equal to the sum of X multiplied by the probability that X is equal to X. So this time I'm now going to multiply them. So we've got minus 1 multiplied by 0 0.2 plus 0 multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 1 multiplied by A plus 2 multiplied by B. We know that that is going to be equal to 0 0.6. So let's set that to 0 0.6. So we've got now minus 0 0.2. This will give me 0 plus now A plus 2B will be equal to 0 0.6. So let's go ahead and solve for this. So A plus 2B will be equal to 0 0.8. And we will call this one equation 2. So I've got equation 1. A plus B is equal to 1 half. A plus 2B is equal to 0 0.8. Simultaneous equations. Equation 2 minus equation 1. We've got now, uh, let's write this. A plus 2B is equal to 0 0.8. And then we've got A plus B is equal to 0 0.5. Subtracting downwards, B will be equal to 0 0.3 with the A's cancelling. We can sub B back in and A will be equal to 0 0.2. So we found the values of A and B. So we've got two unknowns and we've used two equations to solve for them. 
So if I wanted, I could go ahead now and put that this is 0 0.2, and then this one is going to be 0 0.3. So that allows us now to answer these questions. The probability that x is equal to 1, well, that's just going to be 0 0.2. So we can put on 0 0.2. The probability that x is strictly greater than 0, uh, but in turn less or equal to 2, we could say this is a probability of 1 plus a probability of 2. And we could just add these. So that's 0 0.5. Alternatively, you could just do 1 minus p of minus 1 plus p of 0. So that's going to give us now 0 0.5. So that's a slightly more challenging question. In later videos, we'll do some exam style questions, but hopefully that's giving you an insight into a typical thing that you might be asked. So there's a brief intro to the expected value of x or the mean. Let's now look at the variance. We've worked with variance before. We know it's the average squared distance of each observation from the mean. So each observed value from the mean, we look at a squared distance. In general, we said that the variance and we'll write it just here, the variance was equal to the sum of x squared over n minus the sum of x over n all squared. If you want an informal reading of this, we could say now the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. When we're working with a discrete random variable, we can say var x so the variance of x is given to be now the expectation of x squared minus now the expectation of x squared. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's just set up now a, another uh, distribution, a probability distribution, and we will look now at the variance. Remember, variance is a measure of spread. The mean or expected value is a measure of location. So what I'm going to do here is just put up three columns. So what we're going to have then is the following. I'm just going to put these on here. I'm going to have x, and we'll take values of x. I will look at the probability that x is equal to x, and then I'll look at x squared. So let's, again, pick some straightforward numbers. One, two, three, and four. Let's say we've got now the probability that x is equal to x. Let's go for 0 0.1. Let's say another 0 0.1. Let's say 0 0.5 and let's say now 0 0.3. Okay, so what we're looking for then is var x. So what we need then is now x squared. So we're looking to square this. So if I go ahead and square this, I'm going to have 1, I'm going to have now 4, I'm going to have 9, and I'm going to have 16. So the first thing that we're going to look to do is go ahead and multiply these. So we can say var x will be equal now to the expected value of x squared. To find the expected value of x squared, we're simply multiplying it now, x squared, by the associated probability and summing it. So we've got 1 lot of 0 0.1 plus 4 lots of 0 0.1 plus 9 lots of 0 0.5 plus 16 lots of 0 0.3. We are then going to subtract away the expected value of x. Now, often you'll be given this as part of the question. But again, all this is now, and I'll just write here, is going to be now 1 lot of 0 0.1. This time, I'm multiplying x by the probability that x is equal to x, and then going ahead and finding now the square of that. So we're going to be subtracting away the square of this. So what we'll then have is plus 2 lots of 0 0.1, then we will have now plus 3 lots of 0 0.5, and then we'll have plus 4 lots of 0 0.3. We will take this bracket now and square it. So this is going to give me the variance, and we're looking at now the average squared distance of each observation from the mean. So that's going to give me now 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus now 4.5, so 4.5, plus now 4.8, we will add those up, and then we will subtract away now this value squared, which is 0 0.1, plus now 0 0.2. On this one, we're going to have 1.5, so plus 1.5, plus 1.2, which we need to square. So that's going to give me 9.3, then we can have 9.7, and we can have 9.8. So let's go ahead and add this. So this is 9.8 minus, and if I add this up, that's going to give me 3. 
Okay, so if I've got 3 in total, we've got now 3 squared. So just checking that, 2.7, that's 3. Just checking this one. That gives me 8. That gives me 9.3, 9.7, 9.8. So this is 9.8 minus 9, and we can say 0 0.8. So now we can say var x is going to be 0 0.8. So this is just telling us now the average squared distance of each observation from the mean. Let's just pick up what these mean. If we look now at the expected value of x squared, this is simply saying now that I'm doing the sum of x squared multiplied now by the probability that x is equal to x. When I've got now the sum of x, we, sorry, the expectation of x, we've got the sum of x multiplied now by the probability that x is equal to x. We can see these probabilities don't change. So the probability that x is equal to x is the same as the probability that x is equal to x squared. So there's a basic intro to var x or the variance of a discrete random variable when we're looking at this probability distribution. Okay, let's move on. And we've seen in previous videos that if we add a constant to each value in the data set, the mean is going to be increased by that value. We've also seen if we multiply the data set, each item in it, by a factor of A, then the mean will also be multiplied by a factor of A. And that's been shown in a previous video. It will come as no surprise now to see that the expectation of AX plus B, and we'll write it just here, can be written now as a, and then we're going to have the expected value of x plus b. So this now is a general result that you can quote. We've already seen this in a previous tutorial. Remember, this is simply the mean, and you could say that this is a linear function of the mean. So we're adding a value to each in the data set. It's going to increase the mean by that value. If we're multiplying, it's going to multiply the mean. And we looked at that before. So let's just do a recap. We had the numbers 3, 4 and 5. And we saw that if I added 10 to each of these, we would have now 13, 14 and 15. OK, in fact, let's choose some easier numbers. That's, uh, let's just go back. Let's work with some easier numbers for those. Uh, let's go for 4. Uh, let's go for 4, 5, 6. Well, I say easier numbers. I don't think they're either way. Let's do uh, 4, 5 and 6. OK, let's do, um, because these were the same ones we used before, four, uh, let's just add 10, so 14, 15 and 16. So what I'm doing is adding 10. So we can see the mean of these, let's put the mean of these, is going to be 5. The mean of these is going to be 15. So we can see by adding 10 to each of the items in the data set, I've increased the mean also by 10. So taking these back again, 4, 5, 6, if I multiply each item in the data set, 40, 50, 60, we know that the mean of these is going to be equal to 5. We know that the mean of these is going to be equal to 50. So I can see by multiplying each in the data set, we're going to multiply the mean by 5. And this is what it's saying. If we take now the expected value of ax plus b, we can write a multiplied by the expected value of x plus b. Now, with the variance, we've seen that before as well. So let's consider now the variance. If we think about the variance, the variance isn't going to be altered by any addition. It's simply looking at the spread of data. The mean is now a measure of location, hence why when adding this b it's going to move it. With the variance, it's just telling us how spread out the data is. So we can say in general that var of ax plus b is given to be a squared var x. Now hopefully that will make sense. It should really make sense as we're looking at the average squared distance. So if we're multiplying each of our values by a, when we're looking at the squared distance, they're going to be a squared times bigger. So these are now two, uh, two results that you can quote. Var of ax plus b is a squared var x, as now the spread is not going to be changed if we move it now anywhere along this data set by a fixed amount. So you might hear these being called linear functions or linear transformations. So let's go ahead and look at one in action. Let's just uh, write one out. Let's uh, make one up as we go. And we will look now at a, a basic example. So let's say we've got now uh, uh, x and then the probability that x is equal to x. OK, so let's do 1, 2, let's have 4 and let's have 6. So we might have now 1 over 4. Let's go for 1 over 8. 
uh, we've got 1 over 8 and let's then do 1 half. So that's going to give me 1 in total. A quarter plus a quarter plus a half is 1. So what we've got then is the following. We, uh, we could work out, let's find uh, the expected value of x. Let's start off now with the expected value of x. We might be asked to find the expected value of x and then as a result find the expected value of 4x. We might be asked to find the expected value, let's say, of 2x plus 1. We might be asked to find the variance or var. Uh, let's say we got var of 3x. And let's say we've got now var of, let's go for 2x plus 6. So we're going to have to find the variance as well in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is just add another column before I start. And I'm going to consider now x squared. So let's do that. Let's just put that up. So what we'll have then, just let's look at x squared. Let's put x squared there. So 1, 4 four, then we're going to have 16 and 36. Okay, let's look now at the expected value of x. So the expected value of x is the sum of x multiplied by the probability that x is equal to x. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's write out the expected value of x. So this is the mean. So all we're doing is multiplying these two. So I'm just going to quickly go through this and uh, just multiply them. I won't do them. I'll just write them out. So that's going to be a quarter. If I multiply these two, that's going to be one quarter. If I multiply these two, that's going to be plus one half. And if I multiply these two, that's going to give me now, what's that, three. Okay, so what do we have in total? Uh, let's just check I've done these correctly. So that's a quarter. Um, that's going to be now a quarter. That's going to be one half. And that's going to be three. So what does that give me in total? That's a half plus a half plus three. That gives me now that my expected value is going to be equal now to four. So we can see the mean or expected value is four. So what we want to do now is find e of four x, the expected value of four x. So we can say now, just writing this out, e of four x is going to be four e of x. So let's go ahead and write that. So we can say that it's just this, it's four losses. In fact, don't need the brackets, let's get rid of the brackets. So we're just saying now that it's going to be four lots of the expected value. And that's using the property that we've just seen. So let's write this out, 4e of x. Therefore, what we're going to get now is e of 4x is going to be equal to 16. I'm just multiplying this by 4. Let's now look at e of 2x plus 1. We can say that this will be 2e of x plus 1. So that's going to now give me 2 lots of 4 plus 1, which is 9. OK, let's now look at var of 3x. I've just put v. Often it will be written as var. Let's just do that and put var. OK, so let's find var of x first. So we know var x. So var x is given to be the expected value of x squared minus now the expected value of x squared. So if I just consider, I already know this value right here. I already know the expected value of x. So what I'm going to do is take this and square. And we're going to subtract away 16. I uh, don't want 16 squared, just 16. So there we go. That's what I want. So let's go ahead and look now at the expected value of x squared. So this time what we're doing is multiplying x squared by the probability that x is equal to x. So we can say now that var x is given to be 1 quarter, so all I'm doing is multiplying these two now, and then plus now 1 half, so plus 1 half, plus now 16 times by 1 eighth, which is going to give me plus 2, and then we're going to get now plus 36 multiplied by half, which is going to be 18. So what does that give me? That gives me 20 and 3 quarters. So var x is going to be 20 and 3 quarters, so 20 and 3 quarters, I need to now subtract the 16. So that gives me now 4 and 3 quarters. Or if we like, we could say this is 19 over 4. So var x, uh, now the average squared distance from the mean of each observation is 19 over 4, or 4 and 3 quarters. So if we want now var of 3x, we can say that this is going to be 9 var x. We simply take the 3 and we square it. Therefore, what we're going to have is 9 times by 19 over 4. 
So let's just put that for a calculator. I'm probably being a bit lazy. Uh, 9 times by 1904. I should really know this. And we will get now a value for that. So that's going to give me 42.75. So 42.75. Okay, now if we look at the next one, we've got VAR of 2x plus 6. Remember, this linear shift doesn't affect the spread of data. So all this is now is simply going to be 4 var x. So we've got 4 var x. Now we know that var x is 19 over 4, so we can say that this is simply going to be equal to 19. So all I've done is now scale that up. We've squared it. Now to get our 4, we've multiplied by the 4 and we end up with 19. So there we go. A brief introduction now to the expected value or mean and variance or var x of now the probability distribution when we're looking at discrete random variables. In a later video, we will do some typical exam-style questions. Hopefully, though, that's given you a brief intro on how to deal with these problems.